sunglasses indoors, so I'll take them off as we get ready to head in to the wonderful map that is Inferno Betway. They're putting this one in favor of NIP, and I think justifiably so with how the Swedes have been looking today. Ooh, lots of nades purchased up here on Resin Plopski. Got this fast push down through mid from Sergei. <laughs> well, it's going to get smoked uh -oh. off. However, while they're so busy looking at this mid flank, Alu and Yampi both go aggressive down Banana. And if you've blinked, you've missed this round. I hate to break it to you. It's over. Yampi with a double. And Ent's aggression just everywhere. Yeah. They push every extremity and they find the round on the back of it. It looks like NIP were ready for that as well. <laughs> You see that? It looks like NIP were ready for that as well because, um, yeah, they had they had like you said loads of nades, smoke flash nade on two players, and they see the push coming in, and they know if they die, if the, either of these nade players die, their entire game plan is out of the round, and so they have to smoke mid, they have to smoke ends off, essentially giving them like fights for free. They get to fight uh, ult, they get to fight banana, and ends just pick their battles really well. So, yeah, that's a nice round, and they're not going to stop with the aggression either. The confidence is flowing. You can taste it in the air. Alu's pushed down to T-Ramp. He's going to back up eventually with a smoke at his feet. And NIP, they wrap ult to come back down middle with a smoke down in mid. They're not going to get punished by N, luckily enough. But Sergei is holding from a range. Oh, Sunny, rather, is holding from a range with that FAMAS, trying to bait them into Alu's close position. Sergei, however, is on the porch and has support from Yampi, but he's about to get smoked off, leaving Sergei hung out to dry. Oh, Ariel's keeping the apartments under wraps, but now that he's lost his short player, he had to rise to the occasion, and he will. Three in the round for Ariel, and a second on the board for Enz. I'm trying to work out who that is, second from the right. I think it's Ariel far right, and there's a dude with a hat. I'm guessing it's Yampi, but I don't know. Just because after the pistol round, he was celebrating, putting his hands in the air. Either way. I mean, I like to think that their, their prac room like blares the easy for Ents uh, music stop. kit after every round end, <laughs> just to keep the squad motivated. If their games didn't already. Oh my goodness, that nade does so much damage while it only kills one player. It fought a bunch of others down into a very vulnerable oh. realm, but uh... somehow... I, I don't know. The, the the P2s have been able to mop up both players at B. And uh, Ents, they might let this full eco with, you know, just a couple of pistols upgraded into from NIP slip through the net. This is where that nade damage is going to be so valuable, though, right? Every one of these players is pretty much a bullet away from death, with the exception of Plopsky. Ariel and Sergei aren't to know that, though. And that's what makes this 2v4 scary. And look at it get stuck in. Finally, the kill presenting itself. Now they go, now they activate, and they start to deal with these incumbent NIP players back in the site. Popsky not able to find anything. The only man with any HP in this round. Nork, spay, spam it, spam it. There we go. Spraying and spamming. Spraying and spamming. Spraying. spamming. He's doing a combination of the two. That's well, spraying. Close. Either one. Popsky, he needed that kill in the pit, right? Like, he, there was a bait and switch. He has his teammate fighting. Like you said, he's got HP. He's hiding. He's hoping they won't check him. They they don't hard check him. They swing it. And he had a chance. If he hits the immediate dink uh, onto Ariel there, you see he's going he's gonna to have a chance to win the round in a two-on-one. But without it, well, yeah, like you said, you know, the last player smoked off a banana. Not going to happen. Either way, that was an eco for Nip, and they should never have made it that close. So they've still got to be happy with that round. And uh, luckily, Ents had rifles on rotation. If those were less than the rifles, those are UMPs. I don't think Ents would have closed that two on four retake. So now, armed to the teeth are both teams. We have Twist on the primary AWP over Nork, but honestly, that's fine. Nork looked excellent with a rifle as well, back on train. Alu's taking his over towards the long side right now. NIP not really pressuring the middle area. Looking to flash up and on and not committing, though. Enter playing passive in this site. They're going to retake some control, though. Molly Smoke thrown down by Yampi to push the top of Banana. And in the meantime, NIP go, that's fine. You can have it. We'll have mid. They smoke long. They cut Alu off. And they leave it down to the two inside of the site playing a crossfire. Ariel and Sergei, balcony in sight, waiting for this commitment. Oh, dear. Hey. Ooh. Still, through the same gap, he is able to get it the second time around. Manifat is taken now for Ents, and the rest of NIP try and pull the trigger on this site push. They 
are getting away right now. These players not budging and no kills coming through in favor of NIP. Nork gets tagged on the jump peak. Oh, he's in a 1v3. 10 points of health and he will get mopped up there. It's four on the board for Ed. Yeah, Nip get very scared there of Sergei for some reason. They, you know, they smoke off Alu on long with a motor smoke. They kill Ariel Balk and then Sergei gets one. He kills Plopsky in the sight. And NIP, they have two players just sitting there in the corner, like jiggling and wiggling and, and, and waiting for a moto play and, and not trading Sergei. In that time, while Sergei's drawing their attention, Ent push two players through the moto smoke and just kill NIP stuck in the site. NIP, they need that trade, right? If you're playing A on this map, really, off Inferno, this is a map where if you get a kill in a position, doubling down while you have your team there is the go-to. You have to just commit. You have to go fast because you can, you know, you kill Ariel on balcony, you know there's only one player left in A. You trade him, and you probably win the round, or at bare minimum, get a bomb plant down and can play that post plant essentially like a whole new round. So, yeah, they needed that trade, but NIP very hesitant. Not what you like to see. Hopefully, they can start to pick up the pace here in the T side uh, now that they've got more guns out. Twist on a Deagle for the Orb and the last. NIP have weapons otherwise. You have to fight Banana and through the fire and flames. The control of the spray is excellent. Ariel waiting at the bottom of mid. He finds the bomb as well. And Ents, they have no fear of getting aggressive. This is looking like an excellent CT side right now. And Hampus in a one on five. Good luck, buddy. It just ain't happening. That transfer from Yampi was something else, dude. This guy just continues to impress. Such a shame, given the situation he's in. Really feels like wasted talent. But I'm so glad that Ents gave him the opportunity to, to, to play and to be on this roster and to compete against the best, because we know he can do it. That's clear. Ents 2 0 Na'Vi the other day with Yampi at the forefront of that series. So if that's not enough evidence for you, then we're done talking. Time, the attempted aggression. Not gonna bode well for a man like Yampi. M4 is irretrievable. Sunny is now looking at his time to shine at Banana. He gets mopped up. Alu, third man here. There's just more and more. It's like a clown car at the top of B. And each time, more people seem to be getting on out. But finally, they've modeled their way into this B bomb site. Twist in a 1v2. Does this time have armor behind this rifle? Looks to take an aggressive lie down here towards CT. Twist. Tucked in the ruins, and he's looking to ruin this round Ooh. for the side of Ents. Just about survives the journey. Re-peek in, but Ariel is ready. And this continues to be flawless for Ents. Six and O oh on the board. Trying to find the orb from Alu. He died in that close position. It probably is still there. Uh, Ariel's teammate dropped a grenade when he died, and it tagged Ariel for 30. I thought he was going to die off the back of that, right? Like, just the, just the shake of the screen and the fact that grenade hits you will put him off, but he immediately gets that kill. So great work from Ariel. Continuing his streak. He's 11-1 and one right now. You see Sergei pulls a nade. It drops. Ariel gets tagged, and as he gets tagged, he takes his shot. So, yeah, great work. Cold, calm, cool, collected all of the C's here for Ents. And they're going to see what they can do in this seventh round. 6-0 right now, NIP. It's not like they haven't had rifle rounds. They've had plentiful amounts. They've even had this orphan play, so NIP going to need to do something soon. Bit of a tag through the wall. Oh, dear. A lot of a tag through the wall. Ariel, he goes back to four, and, well, he won't go in for a third, eventually giving that one up. There's going to be a re-push on short as Ents set up with a boost and a double set up here. Ariel baiting them in from the corner. And this is a good call from Ents, right? Every time NIP have taken mid, they smoke long and gone short. So Ents trying to get ahead of the curve. Double porch side boost. I'll stack here. 
the end squad and they do get shut down. Finally, NIP are in a situation that feels very, very doable. They're in this four on two. And Rez just waiting. Holding his ground outside of B. Oh, I like this gamble from Ents. But it's right, look at Nork. Yeah, that's the problem, right? Nork is now saying, guys, uh, A side's looking pretty nice right about now. And they all rotate off of Banana. For Ents, this is just going to be the save, right? You're two on four. You try to take the gamble over at B. And the benefit to doing this is that if they come your way, right, you're in that two on four. There's a chance you can find something. And if they don't, well, you're grouped up. You just hold on to these guns. You don't risk losing any. So it's here in round number seven. The NIP finally break the streak of Ents and get their first on the board. Now, this can't just be a flash in the pan. This can't just be a one and done for an IP. They need to keep streaking this together. And the problem they're going to have is that with such a strong start from Ents, it really is going to feel like a grind until you until you get yourself back in that position where you go, yeah, okay, we, we're in a good spot in this game now. Because the investments are going to keep coming through thick and fast for the Ents side. Especially if they're able to hold on to this AWP and M4. Which it certainly looks like right now. And IP, they kind of have more to lose from chasing this than they do to gain. Yeah, I was going to say, it's important that NIP get away with four in their first rifle round, right? Because again, you know, the classic case, it comes down to clutch. If, if one player survives, well, NIP, they win the round, but at what cost? They're, they're not going to have any money. So that's not an issue here. NIP can continue to buy. They get the AWP in play, and things are looking pretty damn good for the Ninjas. Double AWP, though, for Ents. This is the time. They wait till they lose their first round before they try and throw something new in the way. yampi has got his towards B. The grenade going down. Molly on the logs. The nice twist from getting up on top of it to fight that corner. He's got to take a more standard approach. And, well, it doesn't really matter to end. They've only got one player here. Temporarily, Sonny's going to begin his rotation and will come back towards the coffins. Here's the contact being made. And Yampi, oh, he'll hit that shot every day of the week. Twist is gone. And the orb removed, at least from NIP for now. Nort could take it, but he's the one man who's not in this group up towards B. He will come late to join them and will probably save that weapon or pick it up when going into a post plant if NIP can find the entries. That AWP is so good at just locking down Banana in a post plant here for NIP. But two man set up for Ents, they re smoke things off, and NIP have to just hold off another 15 seconds. That 15 seconds is only going to give away more evidence essentially to Ents that, that this one's clear. And what we've just seen on A is Alu's flashed Sergey for a mid peak. And so now they know that mid's clear, a re smoke coming through. Alu could rotate and, and often at times probably should rotate, but because they're a man up, Ents don't feel the need to, and they'll deal, deal with this two on four as NIP commits. He has that first shot oh. and the follow-up still alive and even manages to tag the man on the third. The nade will rain in and deal with him. Yampi has kept this in the advantage of Ents heading into the retake. The Molotov burns out the low HP hampers of the Nork. He gets tagged down very low there, goes back in with the repeat, hits the shot, but it's not the killing blow. And so the defuse coming through for the end squad. Three players staying alive. The good times keeping up here for Ents over on this CT side. And IP, at least with the loss bonus pretty much maxed out and getting the bomb plant have more than enough money. Also with four players surviving in the round prior. So the reinvestment's going to come through. Yeah, and if this goes to Mirage, right, I'm actually really excited. If you look at the numbers just on its own, NIP, it feels like they're not a very good Mirage team, but it's just a map they don't play. In the games they played it, they, they lost an overtime to Vitality. They lost a double OT to FaZe. They beat Fnatic. They fell by a single round to Complexity. So, you know, obviously, <laughs> I'm reading out a list of losses, but with the caveat of their versus a lot better teams in close matches. So we know NIP can play that map to some extent. Well, Ents take us there. That's what they're trying to do. Sunny with a quick pick up banana, smokes the molly and escapes safely. There's a three man B set up for Ents. If NIP just stand a commit here, they will get wrecked. And so that's probably against their best bet. Still stacked up here with three, though. Still lining up utility. So 
to NIP, want to be mob side again. Norks push forward. That's a big kill. That's going to send the rotation back as NIP commit to B. Sergei's begun his route back towards A, but he has no idea which site it's meant to be. Nork picked up, and that's the one lurk down. Now Sergei could even consider rotating back, but NIP have gone silent. They've gone quiet, and they're ready to pop through this smoke into B. Popsky going to go up and over, and he uncovers the double stack that lies within this little orange's position. I'm left in the middle of the site. They have to quickly run back and get it. And Sergey getting close through this smoke in the oh. meantime. Finds the kill on the plant wow. and the follow-up onto the twist. And they are in such control of this game right now, it feels like. Yeah, that was a that was a, a messed up round for an IP. Like to, to be fair, the planter fakes and he was trying to pull his gun out, but Sergey was already in the smoke. He's so quick at reacting. But look at the second play. He's, he's running through the, the coffin smoke. He's trying to get advanced position. He's trying to cut off rotations, but he's not even covering his teammates' bomb plant. Like that's a big error for NIP and one that's gonna cost him around. If he just stayed there, he knew no one could be coffins. That's why he pushed the smoke. And well, Sergey. Maybe closer than NIP assumed, but that was that early B rotate that you know left Sergey milling about in the spawn in the mid round. Alu's last Inferno game was a 45 to 19 performance against Copenhagen Flames. Damn, five and five right now, doing his job, do, doing his duty, but not needed to do anything ridiculous because ends this scoreline is speaking for itself. 8-1 up right now and NIP back with the guns. I hope they move away from B man, set up towards B, get that banana control that NIP is so good at getting and, and leave a man up there. Leave Nork in position while you work that A site. Ents have been reading it, they've been stacking it and they've been putting the orbs here as well. So maybe B is not the solution for the ninjas as they've only won a single round of this map. Oh, they're going to go fast. They have another, another go. They really love this B site, but it doesn't love them nice. back. However, Rez showing us exactly why. And he throws this deep CT smoke that we've seen teams really started to take advantage of. Plays close on the other side of it. Oh. Actually gets caught crossing into the ruins by Ariel. So a three on three gifted over. Rez didn't really need to start spamming that smoke there. That's one of the advantages of having it is that you can just sit on the other side and you're guaranteed like a win on the fight of the players that come through. So now losing him, it's given up this deep CT control. It allows Ents to start to move back in. Nor can have Puss left in a two on two and Nor Ooh. he is going to deliver the spray transfer to deal with them both. Second round on the board for NIP, but it's not worth celebrating yet on the NIP side of things. They still have a ways to go before they get back into this map. Yeah, that was a different approach to B, which is nice for NIP, right? You know, they went for the same site, but they, they did it on contact. They didn't, you know, do the standard, oh, we're going to throw execute smokes and then Ents do what they always do, which is just drop a ball top and, and slow things down by not only seven seconds, but that draws Sergey on the rotate from long so often. So, yeah, NIP, they just take banana, Ents go, yeah, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to default for a minute and half. No. NIP pop in. They get a double entry off the back of Rez at the cost of one, and they close the post front, even though it gets dicey. A round is a round, and NIP will take what they can get, because now the economy of Ents is on breaking point. We have the AWP, we have an M4, but that is pretty much all you can be happy for for, uh, for Ents in this round. That being said, Alu, we know what he can do with this gun. And the main weapons for Ents split one per site. NIP are yet to know that. Alu playing this very wide angle. Twister just homed in on short side. That flash is good. And that shot, Alu now knows that the AWP is off the angle. And that the shot was in response to getting flashed. So he peeks on in. Does overextend a little bit to try and continue his reign of terror. And that allows Hampers the trade. So we are back into this four on four. But only two players inside of the B site. One of them is going to try and get a little cheeky. That man is aerial. The apartment, Sergey back in the bomb site with this Deagle. Rotation not budging from this B site just yet. And while Sunny does begin that rotation now, it's too little, too late for the side of Ents. 
left in this two on four with no money looking into the future and IP. They've got Ents right where they want them if they want to grind back into this game. Yeah, Yampi's already thrown in the towel. He's already saving his weapon on B. Sunny wants an upgrade. And oh, instead of going for a kill, he might just be able to find one here in middle. But he's looking to fight. And maybe escaping was a safer option. There was an AK drop there in middle. And actually, it was an orb. It was Twist's orb. So that would have been a massive save for Sunny. But he hears someone aggressing. He, he feels confident to take the fight. And unfortunately, he doesn't go his way. But yeah, I mean... That's a, that's a rough way to lose a round like that or lose a, a chance to save a gun. That would have been a huge weapon to pick up here for Ents. Either way, it's a round for NIP. They're drawing back into this matchup. Yampi with the one gun, and that will be the only gun in this round for Ents. Pistols around it. Yampi can flash his teammates in with that one bit of utility he saves. But right now, this is NIP getting back into the swing of things. It may be an eight-round CT side currently. Ents have already won the half at a bare minimum, but NIP want to build into things, and this is where they can do that. Three-man B set up here for Ents, and a bit of a mid-push coming in as well. Love these mid-pushes, and in this round, the mid-push might not love them back, as Rez is here holding down the line. Best support from Nork and the NIP, they get that one under wraps nice and quickly. Now we get this reinvestment to come through from Ents. It is going to be lacking this AWP, not even the option to get one of those glass cannons. So rifles out across the board and out in full force here for the Finns. NIP slowly but surely stumbling back to their feet and starting to recover this T side. Now, they're in this position where if they can keep this up, if they can keep finding rounds, they should be in a, in a spot to just keep chaining them together. Because right now, they're in charge of the economy game. Sergey, he knows that some risks might have to be taken Ooh. to win the round. So him and Ariel, they'll aggress it through the apartments. What? Nork is fast out through long, so fast that Sunny wasn't even ready for it. But Yampi is. This leaves Twist. They get the info, though, that Ariel was in apps. Yampi is in CT. So who's at B? The answer, well, it's Twist right now. He's rotated in, and he's got this bomb. Anticipating that Yampi's going to be back in CT, but Yampi has not begun this rotation yet. With the bomb planted, it becomes all too clear to the end squad as to where this threat lies. Now, Twist still has this smoke as well. That's something to bear in mind. Like he wants to try and take the fight with this AWP straight up. There's no kit for the Ent squad, so they've got to be fast in their approach. These two smokes, they can help Ents in this situation. They'll throw the first one in. That's actually going to block off the Ruins peak. Twist now making his presence known, and one of those smokes is Ooh. gone. Twist getting pressured. Lands nice. the no scope, and there's a lot of confidence in that shot there. <laughs> Twist. You cheeky devil, five on the board for NIP, and Ents, no money left, despite the strong advantage they were able to take in this round. Yeah, I like the plant from Twist as well. It doesn't really uh, have any have any difference in the round because he just does that, but he plants, because he knows he has B for free and he can go anywhere he wants, right? Uh, he plants wider for Coffin so that, you know, if he was stuck uh, ruins, a player couldn't just stick the bomb. It, you know, he, he could see him from the ruins position by just jiggling. So that's a nice plant there. And I feel like teams should use it more uh, when they have the B site, when you know it's clear and you're safe to plant open for the ruins. Obviously, the reason is it's default, uh, the, the default is covered by the coffin is because often you'll just throw those two smokes into B and execute, cutting a player out. In that case, Twist, he makes the right call and he shuts it down. NIP, they shut down that round. I was talking all over it. Nothing even happened. Hence, they get aggressive, they throw some grenades and they get mopped up. As they did two rounds ago in the last eco. So last round of the half here. And this dominant or once dominant lead for Ents has really tightened up. Five rounds in a row for NIP off of this 8-1 lead. And now NIP looking to find a seven round half. That would be quite the recovery when you think about the fact that they were 6-0 and down at one point in time. I mean, they were 8-1 down at one point in time, right? So this is uh, this is a great streak from NIP. Alu's kind of sick and tired of us talking about the Swedes, and so he's trying to get us hyped up about Ents again in this round. He's already taken a man advantage for the finished squad. NIP. 
wasn't able to deal with him yet. Ali was still floating around in the top of mid, pretty aggressive. And that player crossing, Hampus never even got the info that Ali was in this position to maybe wide swing. Oh, Hampus dear. is going to get the better of him the second time around. Sergey is boosted up here on the head of Ariel for a peek into the apartment. And you can see that as they start to aggress in through mid, they're aware of this as a possibility. And that boost becomes a bit of a slaughterhouse for Ents. Bomb plant gonna come through. It's round 15. So these two at B, they're gonna attempt it. Do they have what it takes? Sunny and Yampi left in this retake. They don't have a kit, Harry. So that's already not boding well for Ents. Nork naded Boiler from the T-stairs there. So he really blew Sergei out of the water in this round. And now Ents, they might be drowning in their own blood. Flash for Yampi is all they can muster. Quick pop for Rez, blinds himself, but not an issue. He's not fighting yet. Now he will. Damage done to Sunny. Here's Yampi on the corner, and he's cleared up as well. Rez and Popsky shut it down, and NIP recover from an 8-1 lead in the favor of the Finns all the way to a split down the middle at the end of the halftime. We're going to see if NIP can keep up the streak, or if Ents will come alive on the top. Well, Ents, they held a lead and they still hold a lead, but are they in the lead? I don't know. NIP pull a massive comeback in that T side, six rounds in a row to round things out. And well, Ents now moving over to the T half. It is, of course, NIP's map pick, but the new in-game leader, we're going to have to see how they deal with the plan of Ents. Quick taps for Yampi and he will just delete the B defense. NIP, they're rotating A. Rez is running away. Rez wants nothing to do with this. He has a smoke. I'm, I, 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 I don't get this. I'm, I'm not too sure as to why he did that, but he gave them B. He was in CT the entire time. Like, unless you're trying to like play ahead of the game and be like, oh, they, they got B picks, they're gonna go A. But Yampi got two immediate kills. So of course, Ents are gonna commit. That's a very weird one. Well, there might be more weirdness, Hugo, before all is said and done. Cause keep your eye on a guy called Alu. We all know him. Some of us love him. He's down here sneaking in the back line. And he's going to deal with these players wrapping in. Rez falls, and that round really does fall apart for NIP. Yeah. The only way I can I can try and understand that from Rez's perspective is because Yampi got those kills as a deep smoke bloomed at bottom B. So maybe in his head, he's thinking, oh, like you'll see here, Yampi gets kills, there's a the smoke. Obviously, Ents are pushing that smoke. They've just got two kills. Why wouldn't they? That's all, always going to be, you know, max one more player there. And even then, unlikely. So yeah, maybe Rez tries to, to overread the situation or someone makes a bad call, but... Yeah, that, that, that felt like a throwaway for NIP. That felt like it's still a doable round after those kills. But now, Ents, they're going to reap the rewards. They're going to be benefiting greatly. Nice grenade from Rez, but it's coming at the cost of Ents rushing A. This rotate is a better one for NIP. They see the one man in B, and, well, unfortunately, they're too late here. Ents have already sped up. Hampers is trying to scout. If he can get even one kill here or soften up some targets with a Deagle, that will do some damage. Rez is going to try and capitalize, but two kills coming through. One for the long side, even with the bomb drop to the library. Nort can't hold on to it and ends they're gonna go 10 7 up things are looking good right now for the Finns. i love the pace nice and fast decisive t side and that's something that the nip definitely didn't have like for sure they get seven rounds they look good but i wouldn't say that nip played decisively on the t side they went a twice in that half once on a full eco and once in a rifle round where they just couldn't trade out sergey in the site and then they went b for the rest of the game so i already like what i'm seeing from ends here Nice Plopsky out with a Zeus. He's in B. <laughs> hey, maybe we get to see a Zeus kill in this round. Maybe we don't, though. You know, it's always the risk. Sometimes things happen. Sometimes things don't. Here we go. I think I've covered all my bases yeah. there. Now with Sunny getting stuck in in the apartments with this Mac 10. There's oh, a couple of players here short side. Let's see it. Plopsky tries to jumping Zeus. It doesn't work. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, and with that kill, the B site's fallen, right? Ents have already moved in. They've got all their belongings in boxes. And they now have contacted the interior designer. The architect, Rain, on the line. Figuring out how they could plan a nice little open, uh, open layout inside of B. So do we want mahogany brown or teagle blue for our kitchen brain? I just I can't. I'm stuck between the two colors. They're both great. Come on, Rain. Sort it out. I don't know. They're even making a documentary right now. 
Multitasking. Alu, what are your thoughts on NIP? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Alu, you know, like, how would you describe the average life of, a, of an e-gamer? Um, Alu just sitting there giving answers. Well, you know, we play games. Well, I'm actually in one right now. We're uh, playing versus NIP, and they've got a force fight. He's actually doing a great job of commentary without even realizing it. They've got the uh, the full by rather on the side of NIP. Rifles out across the board. And a bit of a bonus round here for Ents with two Mac 10s still in play. And they're looking to set up for what seems like just a fast B play. There's a fake smoke thrown out at long to keep these players rotating Ooh. off of A. And Nork and Plopski at B, they don't really care. They don't need the reinforcements. They've held it down very favorably between the two of them. And they're continuing to dish out this damage now. Rotation's even arriving. There's no flash for Twist to go through this CT smoke, but he just runs it dry and comes in through the back line. So an eighth now on the scoreboard for NIP, and this game still has some mileage on it yet. Yeah, worth noting that was a bonus round for Ents, right? They're two Mac 10, so a player like Nork is going to get away with a lot of value from a position like that. Headshot angle far away, and the Mac 10s can only do dink damage. They can't kill him. It's going to be a round for NIP, and they can build off the back of that, right? Now with lots of money, even more utility, yet to field the AWP on either side, but, uh, you know, we'll wait for that one. There was money for Ents for it, they just don't have an interest. And Sergei, he's gonna get Molly to top B, but he will take control. Good grenade from uh, NIP onto Alu. Bet she found some considerable damage with the utility, and it was only from Rez, who will rotate back towards Long. NIP wait with his crossfire in B, but of course the CT smoke would render Nork useless in this position. He spots a player dropping, and he will fall back. Popsky has a Molly for when Ents commit. Yampi's in a position that can get, you know, cancelled out by the Molotov, but NIP don't want to waste it on a gamble when they know that they, they should save it for an execute. And well, that execute, Harry, it will never come, at least not on B. And so have rotated out of the banana and left Yampi here for a lurk. Everyone else smoking long and taking that mid control. You get out into the top of mid, and Rez is still holding close. He's going to get rewarded with that kill onto Ariel. Now, while all this is going on, Ents, they still have banana control. So everything they're showing here at A might just prove to be a fake. That bomb is pretty deep within the apartments on the back of Alu, however, and there's no one else nearby to help out. So he really can't afford to go down here. Luckily for him, there's not really anyone on the nip side who could spot him in this position. Yampi actually leaving the B site after throwing in a bit of a... Ah, yeah, I see that on the map. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's rejoined the rest of the gang here at A to try and commit to this site, and they are just getting churned up. There's eight seconds left. This bomb would have to be getting planted now, and they haven't even secured the site. So that round kind of falls apart for Ed's. NIP, the CT side defense, since the rifles have come out, started to piece itself together quite nicely. Yeah. Individuals looking very, very good. NIP flashing each other into fights and stuff. Things are looking nice. Uh, those B executes are going to be a big problem. Or, or, you know, not necessarily, but I think uh, they could be the solution, I guess, is a better way of saying that for ends uh, when they hit the rifle rounds, right? We saw one of them earlier on, but was with, it was with bonus. So, you know, we didn't see the, the full entourage of weaponry that ends bring into that B bomb site. And hopefully that can come through later. Right now it's an eco, allowing the NIP double digits, assuming these Ds don't destroy. And that's still... A pretty big assumption, because we know Ents, they have some capable pistol players. Rez watching Boiler just misses the timing as they get into that position. He's going to take some shots, but he's only trying to draw in attention as he waits for a hallway burst. Nothing here, though, from Ents. They're just congregating in middle. Yampi lurking B again. Ents not getting challenged. They've been given mid in this round. It's a safe decision by NIP, knowing they're versus pistols. They don't want to fight for this close control where pistols can take them down. So Twist looks for a range battle where he can get flashed in from a teammate. Oh, he's going to come down. He is white, though, and that will give Ents the room to move into CT. There's the info. Twist gets it. He knows at least one. He didn't see all five, though, or four, rather, and that's a big problem now for NIP as they have to go and patch that hole. Twist with some damage. Hampus drops the bomb. Hassani hang around, hung around with it, and that's a massive mistake as Ents, they were splitting B, but Nip have turtled inside of B, and Nip owned the bomb. Luckily enough, Alu catches Twist and a gun with it, but this is all over the place. That bomb still hasn't been secured, and neither has B. Plopsky was waiting the entire time, knowing Yappy 
who was lurking banana, and Norka shut down a CT player. One by one, Ents are falling, and it's all because they can't make progress as a team because of this bomb. Ariel's finally gotten it, but he is not going to get out of the round. And uh, dear, oh dear, that is not how Ents wanted that to go. I imagine they would have just sped fast towards B if Sunny didn't die there, and that would have probably gone a lot better for them in a five on two. Yeah, they're going to call a pause. I don't blame them after that one. That is a mess. Pretty grim little stat right there. And yeah, it's a shame to see that round fall apart in the fashion it did. Hugo, we got another Krieg out for Ed. Mm. We got another one of those ah. Kriegs. This time it's Sunny. I think since the nerf, it's appropriate to call it the Craig. Yep. Uh, so Craig. Craig's out for the boys. Sunny going to be donning it. Let's see what he can do. Old craig -a -roo. Look at the crack some heads. Or crack some heads, I guess. Let's see if he can do that. Heading towards ult. We've got Banana flashes for Yampi and taking quick control, but NIP back to a standard setup. Triple B to allow for that utility to be a mass. And the Molotov. Oh, oh no. They're gonna spread. That was a bait for NIP. They throw the Molly. Sergey, the only place he can survive is logs. And then NIP, what do they do? They need logs. I mean, he was still getting burnt. Yeah. That felt like some real BS for yeah. Sergey. That's like a classic case of there's no actual fire at your feet, but like, I, I, I don't know, you're just very warm underneath all this clothing, I guess. And, and then the nade, I guess, really doesn't help acclimatize him to all of that. So kill found for NIP as they're looking to tie this up at 11 to 11. Ariel gonna try and recuperate these sunk costs. Getting out over here towards short side. Now there's a very heavy lean towards this A bomb site from NIP. Popsky is alone at B right now. If he falls, that would be very, very bad. So he can't afford to uh, to take many chances here. Calls for the rotation of Nork back round. And while this has gone on, Ents, they've actually re-geared back up and now look to hit this A bomb site. Now there's a, a pretty scary crossfire here, right? Two players over at porch side, one tucked in the cub cubby at long. Ooh. They've just seen Twist getting down off the, uh, the boost at porch. And Rez has actually fallen back out the cubby as well. So NIP, they, they dismantle this crossfire that they had set up. Uh -oh. Fall back into these more passive angles. And Sunny with the Craig opens the round up. Ariel moving in next. Twist falls. It's Hampus alone down in the pit. And Yampi's going to best him. I would have loved to have seen that crossfire help for just a few more seconds. The reason NIP deconstructed the boost is earlier, Enz had Ariel in boiler and he spotted Twist up top. He took a shot and so that knowledge was there. Obviously NIP were gambling with the fact that, haha, they know we're here, so surely they won't think we're still here. Why wouldn't we have rotated? But then Twist, uh, you know, for whatever reason, NIP, they call a, a backup. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the calls back up there to give away the mid control. They were right in knowing Ents were coming and falling back into a passive setup. But that player on long hits the worst timing. I think it was Twist. He was holding the corner. He looks away as Ents enter, and then he re-aggresses back in. But they are already wide, and he gets stuck on the corner. And, and it just falls apart from that, right? The creed kills him, and Ents, they just pushes a unit. I love how... When Ents get this kill, Ents get a kill, they will just commit off the back of it. They won't hesitate. They won't hang around. And they just completely entrench that site, circle that site from a short and long. And a really, really nice round from Ents keeps them in this game. And IP were putting together a streak on the CT side of three. It is finally broken. And an orb. Finally, it is here. But not for Nip. He's been flashed in. He's looking for kills, and he might come to regret that decision. Now, there is a second man here at B, just in case exactly that happened. And at this point, you're, you're kind of like trying to tempt Ents into committing to this play on the back of getting that kill, and they won't suspect necessarily this double setup here, especially not because Nork still hasn't been spotted as far as they're aware. Rez might just be the only man here. Now, while Alu is up the top of Banana oh, with like this, this AWP, rest of the gang are out in top mid. 
with that bomb. They're going to start to rotate back because Alu has been able to hold on to this top banana. Now, Nork got boosted up by Rez into this position. And Nork, as, as we said earlier, still hasn't been seen at this bomb site. So, Ents, will they be ready for this double hold at the oranges and, and, and up on top of this boost? It's going to reposition, drops that smoke. It's going to force them to go through it. They get that kill. Now, are they ready for Nork up here? They haven't seen him yet, and he will shut down the first man. They start to pressure him. A wow. second kill onto the Deagle. Let's Whoa. make it pretty. It's all three for Nork as he gets it done with the sidearm there. 11 on the board for NIP. That little sneaky play from Nork yield some pretty big results. And you can see they just have no idea. Why would they, right? The fact that Nork is there is really good because in order to get on that position, you have to make noise. You, there's no way of doing it unless you boost. And so that boost is so smart for NIP. Ents think they're committing into an empty bomb site after Alu gets that orb pick. And well, Nork, he just mows him down from the top of the boost, even pulls out the sidearm to shut down the round. NIP, they lose one, they instantly recover and find another. 14, Sergei play for Finland in the King of Nordics against Sweden. Hampers dropped 29 kills on cash for the win. That's how you know it was a long time ago. Firstly, Sergei was 14, but also it was on cash. So, yeah, Hampers looking to, once again, take down his former foe in Sergei. Sweden versus Finland. Right now, quick pause before the action continues. Enters money, come to a bit of a close. They win one, instantly recovered, and now SMGs and pistols in this as they wait for the, bo uh, the bonus to build. And IP get a free orb off the back of that round as well, so Twist, of course, will take it into this. I imagine we'll see him on B. He has the spawn for it as well. But actually heading elsewhere, back towards A for the long side. Of course, yeah, NIP run triple B with Rez there on uh, on the utility. So Twist is going to remain on the A site and NIP will get aggressive. I like the call. It's after a pause as well. Ents might not expect it, but a oh, missed grenade. No. It hits his teammate and does a hell of a lot of damage. Oh dear. But there is this three-man lean over towards the B site. Hampus is aggressed out mid as well. However, while all this has gone on, uh -oh. it's left one man at eight. Twist with the orb and he's staring down mid. Players are in the apartments and NIP, they don't know exact numbers, but they know there's a lot of players here at Banana. It might be more than they're accounting for though. And this A site is a real vulnerability. Twist is now all alone and there's a player out balcony. Twist is dead. He's gone. This A site has fallen. And NIP getting a little too big for their boots in this round. They get aggressive, they get shut down. And this leaves them in a three-on-three -three retake, but an AWP in the hands of Sergey, an M4 in the hands of Alu. And still a good chance that Ents could find this round. Alu is all the way down here in the bottom of mid, but this isn't as bad as it seems. He can keep an eye on the cross. He can oh. serve as a distraction and he catches Rez completely unprepared. Now starts to begin a rotation in, and NIP, they might decide to save. That kill gets delivered to Plopsky, but so much time ticked off this bomb. They concede the round, and it's 13 on the board for Eds. Yeah, that was a weird one for NIP, right? Like, I like this setup where Hampus gets aggressive, but Twist, he was covering T-Ramp, and, and, you know, in this case, like, oh, you know, obviously that's probably something they've run in Prack, and, and it didn't go badly, but in this case, Ramp was empty, there was 3B, and Hampus was getting wrapped from ult. Twist should have been on the long side watching ult Mid to, to um, cover Hampus rather, because Hampus can watch both ramp and banana from bottom mid, right? It's like the same angle. If someone swings you, you're looking in that position yeah, anyway. I... And so Twist essentially lets his teammate get wrapped and then dies to the same player who comes back up through the mid smoke. The, the thing that's so wild is like, yeah, you understand covering the ramp in the beginning, right? As Hampus yeah. is getting set up because that is when he is in danger. But once he's there, I thought we were going to see Twist reposition. Exactly, yeah. uh, and that part just never comes through. So now Ents. In this round, Twist, he, he kind of makes up for it by taking a man away early on, and it's quite the man to find. However, Yampi, he won't admit it, but he loves it when Alu dies, because it means he gets his hands <laughs> on this big green gun. Oh, wow. Now, he's looking to show us what he can do with it. Yeah, that, that is not wrong at all. Uh, I'm sure Yampi prefers having the AWP, but, well, Blobsky is going to send him back to the graveyard. He goes, nope, that's Alu's. Can't use that. And Yampi shot through a smoke in this round. He's going to get put down. So, NIP 5-3 up and a very good position. Ariel spotting a player atop the boost. He's not going to get a second chance, though. Quick drop off from Rez. Falls back safely. Ooh. Boost up in B for NIP, but Ents are committing towards A. They've got three up, and the Molly on long continues to throw spanners in the works, continues to delay Ents on this aggress. 
Ariel has grenades for the pit, but it's a crossfire from the site of the balcony, so this utility finds nothing, and Ariel now knows that's clear. He jumps on top of the barrel and spots for a potential exit, out of which there is none. That long smoke fades, and Twist didn't realize he's up for the chopping block. Sergey takes him down, and now this site just got scary. Now there's a wrap coming in from long side, and that needs to be contained by Propsky. He can't do it. He can't step up. Rez now holding down the line. They mow up, or they mow down, rather, and Rez finds a double as both of them walk into his crosshairs. Low time for rent and not a round for them it's going to be 12 on the board for nip yam peter fate there as well shooting through the smoke only draw uh, draws a shot right back and this is such a close game right now Interesting. Very, very interesting. Ah. AK is better. Yeah, and you know, it's always been the case, right? For people who have like taste, <laughs> you know, like I think, I think that's the, uh, oh. that's the mutual agreement. I'm glad Valve went the Valve route, right? Which is as soon as a gun gets good in this game, they just make it useless. And that's fine by me, honestly. Like R8, useless. Fine by me. Krieg, good, useless. Fine by me. Keep doing it, Valve. As far as I'm aware. As long as, you know, you don't nerf the Deagle or the AWP again. Just keep your hands off my green gun. Yeah, if they touch either of the AWPs, right? The Deagle or the AWP itself, I'll be I'll, I'll be emailing myself right now. <laughs> Rez falls immediately. The Nate Stack finds him. North has got to make a stand and making oh, a stand. He shall leak out. Let's go. And he gets it all. It's Plopsky helping him out. And they keep that round under wraps. These anti-ecos have been so clean for Nip. That's one thing that you can't fault in this series. Like, they just don't lose the pistol. Well, if you remember, right, heading into train, we were saying, how sick would it be if you get Popsky and Nork both just playing the lights out CS yeah. we know they're known for? Well, Hugo, look at this scoreboard. Between them, they have 47 kills in this game right now. Damn they man. are both showing up. And the fact that they're both B-site players, that's stellar, because it makes this B-site, like, terrifying to try and move into if you're ends. I'm going to set up for a, an A play here with one man actually going out of the uh, apartments now. Slowly but surely taking this banana control. It is just the full eco here for the end squad, but we've seen them find success in rounds just like Ooh. this. And that little tag there onto Twist is going to help out. I want to see a bit more from him on this AWP, right? Because Nork, right? We've, we've known him to be this this kind of hybrid play, you know, playing with the AWP and M4. He's looking great. And, and Twist is the main AWP. I feel like we still have yet to see him pop off in a very big way in this map. He didn't have it in the T side at all. So there's worth keeping that in the back of your mind. But yeah, you know, now now's his chance on the long corner. This is the perfect position for it. It's one of the first AWPs he's even had in this game. And he is going to take a quick shot back up. Nice collapse. You say his name, Harry, and he delivers the pain. Two from the, for the price of one. And Sonny, he's grabbed the D to try and cross, but to little avail. NIP, back-to-back -back anti ecos right? One of them a little bit more than the, the last, but 14-13 now, just two rounds away, 2-0-ing this series, and looking good inside of this group, saving themselves, in fact. And this has got to be the round for them. This has got to be a recovery, otherwise NIP might push it over the line. I'll try it again. I see if I, I'll see if I can jinx someone to step up. I want to see a bit more from Yampi because he's been great in this game and he's been so good at getting these opening kills for the side event. So let's see if he can wreak some havoc. Instead, it's Sergey going aggressive up in towards Banana and he shuts down both players here. Plopsky, you've got to hold the line and they are already so close to Molly. Burns Ooh. Sergey out from beyond the grave. But this B site is still a no-go zone for NIP. And they're going to take themselves a the 14th round on the back of this fast B hit. Yeah, NIP already saving and Ents know it as well. Sonny's already found out to try and find these exits in the alt, uh, alt mid. Ents aren't giving away a kill on B. They're playing very safe, very tucked as they, you know, they need the money more than NIP need the money at this point. Has Alu crashed? That's the question. No, okay, he's staring into the wall. It's all good, it's all under control. Ents get away with four alive in that round off the back of some key kills from Sergei. He finds every single frag in the round, four Ents. 
NIP. They do get away with the Orb and the M4. That's going to be something, right? Both these players can drop guns. We can have a full rifle round at 14-14. Nip can still hold a buy, but whoever loses this is going to be in a bit of a predicament. Also, Nip and Eds, who do at least have the bonus of, of winning that round and keeping their players alive. Boy, oh boy, this one is tight, Harry. Quick tack pause for ends before they get into round number 29. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I believe that stat, right? We've seen the amount of grenade kills, even from NIP down banana. Alu's hesitating with Uto. I wonder if he wants to save the money to, to buy the AWP next round, right? Uh, you know, regardless of how this goes. Now he's going to do it. I'm reading into things, Harry. But either way, back into the action. Nork on the AWP. He's taking over Twist. I, I really respect Twist for this. He's clearly gone. Nork, take the AWP. I don't feel it. You have double my kills, over double my kills. This is your time to shine. And let's see what Nork can do with it towards B. Yeah, he didn't have a good spawn to take the early fight, and he'll decide against it. And I, and I like that decision as well, right? Because NIP, this banana control that they've gone for aggressively, it's kind of given and it's taken based on, on just how the immediate heads-up duels go. And I think Ents, they've really accommodated this uh, this aggression and started to use it against NIP. So in this round, it's a much more reserved approach. Now, Ents, they're setting up for an A-side play. They're just going to commit into this bomb site. And NIP, they need to start rotating players around now. These three players in the site, they've got to buy time because if they fall right away this round is over Ooh, and what do you know yeah. they've fallen right away this round it's over that's such a shame for for nork or the orp as well right we didn't even get to see it play into this round that's the first apps drop we've seen since i think round two of this map which is nip on glocks bursting out apartments to really no success because of the glocks so yeah and they throw in something new at round number 29 and it catches nip off guard some quick kills even with the advantage going in the way of nip res drops ham uh, yampy before anyone and still ends trade their way to a win so nice round from them they might be able to take us to a third here that third map's going to be mirage and a lot of question marks as to what we're going to expect on that one right obviously one that we know ends enjoy one that nip don't tend to play but when they do they often are competitive, even if it isn't necessarily a win. Popsky desperately trying to save this gun. Even taking a fight here is a risk, right? He just wants the info, smoking them off and saving his weaponry. So yeah, no no chance that Ents are going to take away a gun in this post part. They get close, but close won't cut it. 15 rounds though, that will. Ents only one away from a third map in this series and NIP one away from an overtime in their map pick. solution here for NIP. They've called an attack pause. I think they're going to move away from the triple B early, right? Like while the utility has been really good, and obviously that's a risk in, in calling that if Ents B rush, but you know, NIP have been doing it pretty much every round this half and Ents reacted to it well that round by going, okay, they're triple B early. So let's elevate an A round knowing that Res will be in rotation when we commit. So, you know, that's Ents trying to read into the fact that NIP are throwing all these grenades down banana. And it's a game of cat and mouse. It's a mental game because do Ents commit to B because of that fact now, or do they commit to A fast again because NIP might run triple B? It's it's a question mark. And God, I wouldn't want to be an in-game leader at this scoreline. But NIP two on A or two on B rather, three on A, and a bit of utility, but not the full banana control that NIP have shown in the past. Oh, Nate stack into Nork going to tag him down very, very low. He falls back from Banana. And Ents, they also get the information that the AWP is here. And now they slow it right down, right? With, with, with Nork firing off a shot, you know those nades have done damage to him. You know he's not feeling pleased and that you've wounded a man at the B site and forced a more passive hold. So now they go back, they start to consider their other options. Have this triple short setup from NIP. Now we've seen them do this once, and they dismantled it before we could see how effective it was. Oh. And in this round, we're going to see it springing to life. They're buying for overtime. They're trying to get us there. And now just three players, now two players for Ents left to deny it. Yampi and Sergey. Two on five. Rotation round from Nork. He finds himself in the speedway with this AWP. And this leaves a temporary two-on-two -two available to Ents in the A bomb site. Sergey creeping up close. To 
these hay bales. He's gonna get spotted just yet and Hampus down in the pit. You can hear the footsteps, they come his way, they drop the smoke to isolate wow, the fight, man. but Hampus keeps this site under wraps. We're heading to overtime as NIP grind a 15th out onto the board. Inferno still has that much more to show us. That's a huge round for Hampus. The fact that he even gets mollied as well. Ents have been throwing that same molly whenever they go short side and they cut him off, but it's the double setup from NIP that deals with the first man. Hampus you know, draws him in from the corner, dropping Alu inside of Boiler, and it's a great round. Yampi's now taking the orb over Alu, and you know, things are falling apart here, Harry. Or well, not falling apart, per se, but you know, everything's switching up. Everyone realizes how close this game is, and everyone's trying to find the solution, right? For NIP, it's a double AWP. That's what they've gone for. A ducking shot in the apartments is going to be sunny. He avoids the orb. He avoids the haircut. Men's have already had their fair share of those. Nice grenade, though. And over from Popsky, hits Sergei to 50. Yampi with the orb for seemingly the first time this game over Alu. And while Nork, he's going to make his work. He's going to make Alu sing as he finds him towards the top of Banana. Yampi pick up the pieces of this round now for Enz. He's going to head back towards middle, regroup up with Ariel, who has tried to take that mid-control, using pretty much all his utility, but it's all a fake, it's all a ruse. Enz going right back towards B, and NIP are about to construct a boost by the looks of things. Popsky could go up and above. You wouldn't want to put the AWP up here ever. Uh, Nork will set his teammate up for success. Now going back to the coffins. Now last time Ent saw the AWP here, it was in CT. So it's essentially the reverse now for NIP as they wait for this commitment. And this hold at B between Nork and Plopski is so often stood the test of time. Now they've got to do that more than ever. And they've got a second man in res in rotation. He's going to flash through this smoke and that allows Plopski to come in with this peak from up on top the boost. Rez finding another and through the smoke, yet more damage getting done. Yampi and Sunny left up in this two on five. And even more damage done from Plopsky on the boost. Sunny is going to take the advantage over Nork. Secures that kill at least, alleviates some of this pressure that's close in the site. Yampi Ooh. just gets naded out of the round and Sunny followed up onto from the banana flank. NIP going to take the first here in overtime. Man, the use hill for NIP just continues to be uh, top tier, not just banana control, but even in the retakes. And Alu pouring out for, for your homie Alu here because he, he gives the AWP over. He then takes a peek that if he had the AWP, he probably would have won, but he has an AK. And so he peeks right into the AWP at top of banana and immediately gives the advantage to NIP. From the very opening of that round, Ents were fighting a four on five and they will fall in the 31st. Lots of numbers here, and all of them in favor of the Swedes, but that can turn very quickly. Alu's requested his all back, and Yampi will oblige. Alu just holding T spawn to mid. Wait and see if NIP want to throw anything aggressive into this round. We haven't seen NIP at all fight for Khan. Not, not once, it feels. And uh, Nork's baiting them in with the AWP from the corner, but you can notice Plopsky is still here at the sandbags. This is a position that Ents have not had to deal with, and Plopsky's utility, he has loads. It might all be wasted here if he gets mollied out of this spot. I'd love to see him drop the molly as, as he hears them approaching. And there it is, perfect timing. It's going to keep Ents out of this position, but... It's now, as the molly goes, Ents are only tempted back into B. They know that MIP have less utility than prior or than before. Oh, and a bit of a read coming in from the Swedes. They move Nork over to CT. He'll reconsider. And I don't blame him for not wanting to rotate A when Ents go silent, right? Just run a standard setup. You don't want to throw anything away in OT. And here come Ents. Oh, and Rez backed into a corner. But he's fighting for his life now. And Pete will snatch it from him. And now the option to try and take a line in through CT gets denied by Nork on this AWP. And Alu decides the best thing for him is to leave this fight alone and focus his attention elsewhere. Twist, trap, short <gasps> no. side. The timing couldn't be worse for him. As he turns away, Pete comes in from the apartment. So two on two for NIP. Still a chance in this round. And the fact that Ents have had to go and get this bomb out of Boiler has allowed even more time for these rotations to come in. Alu, oh, you're gonna try and snatch this oh. away. And the no scope through the smoke has done it. Plopsky now 1v1 as he does find Alu. Just Sunny left Ooh. to beat, but Sunny holds down the line. It's 16 on the board for Ents as they tie this up. Second round of OT going their way.
I don't know, man. This could have double overtime yeah. written all over it, Hugo. This feels neck and neck. Sonny is the bottom performer in the server, but he wins the one-on-one -on -one that keeps sense in this game. If they lose that round, I think this probably falls apart. But Sonny, what a crucial clutch. And he's going to save things here for Ents. 16-16, everything to play for, everything to play with, with all the money in the world. It's not 10k OT, it's 16k, how we love it. Everyone can buy, Yappy's getting hit by the molly, Popsy's gonna spam, but the flash is good. Yappy can play off the back of it, Popsy's stuck in the corner, there's a trade, but it's coming to cost, all that util again gone in the banana and never needed in this round, but maybe it should have been because Ents is still here, they won't commit. And IP set a rotation that way, but that's exactly what Ents want to happen as they look back towards middle. Alongside smoke here, will cut Twist out of this position. Drops a grenade, but ends a patient in their approach. That bomb storm banana is going to come and regroup in middle. Res might want to begin a rotation right back towards this A bomb site, but of course, you can never truly know on a map like Inferno. The info just isn't there for Nip, it's a gamble, but it is the right call to make. Rez has made a little bit of noise there on that rotation, though. And that might have just spurred Ali back to go and consider Banana. 45 seconds in this round. Rez starting to aggress into top mid. Ooh. At this same timing, Ariel on the angle can best him. Rez going for an info play, an even odds. Oh, now this yeah. A site faltering for NIP. Twist left here alone. He's been pretty quiet all game, and we need him to step up now. Only one kill found. It's all on to Nork. That, that's Nip giving the round away right there. They had everything in the palm of their hands. They had the read. They had three on A out of the four alive. Ents were ready to set up. And then not only does Rez try and get information, he dies. Hampersen feels the need to get something for NIP. He pushes apps and dies. And it leaves Nork in a clutch. Like, you know, I understand why Rez wanted the info, but that's a big mistake from NIP. They've just fed the kills to Ents and let him take the lead at the half of OT. Nothing Nort can do with a triple crossfire inside of the site. And if NIP just held, if they just waited another 10, 15 seconds, they probably would have won that round. They've been really, really good on these defenses and, and just holding down for fights. But yeah, forcing them is, is not where they're going to find success. And you can see here, one by one, they just push in, push into the, you know, the lion's den. And Harry, what is in the lion's den? Lions, mate, if I That's what they go. say, yeah. Damn right. Well, Ents, they take a chunk out of NIP and they take the lead in OT. IP, they now need to go flawless if they wanted to close this out. They need two at least to lock in another overtime. Ents need but two rounds here on this CT side. Ooh. However, Nork is already making things tricky as Nork often does. That's going to force the rotation away from this B site. Ents had stacked three players here early Ooh. on. Now Alu rotates away with the AWP. Interesting there, Rez takes the AWP because he's low and then gives it back. So I imagine he's going to be the first man in. That's probably the, the idea, right? got it in his hands and was like, yeah, I hate this. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, we, Rez can AWP. That's the thing. Rez is a very capable AWP player, has been in a main AWP in the past as well. So it, it's, you know, it's perfectly viable. But I guess NIP want a different idea. They want a different game plan. They are going to send Rez in first. Yeah, he'll spearhead the charge with the rest of the gang in behind him. And Sunny through the CT smoke. Whoa. So much damage done. Yampi is the crossfire set up. Twist with the no scope. Flash through for Sunny. USP out. Oh, and everyone's my. blind. It's chaos. Twist is delivering, though. And he's kept that IP in this, but the smoke <gasps> fades out no. with a critical miss shot that could have oh, made all the difference. Oh dear, Ariel left in the clutch a 1v2, but this man's got a cool head on his shoulders. Trying to creep in, it's this all over at dark that could cause problems and twist. If there ever was a wow. round to step up, it is that round there. He goes from not really giving us much in this game to a 3k to keep the dream alive for NIP. They take the first in the second half of OT. They tie it up with ends. That was excellent for twist. And now, right now, Rez is probably saying, Whew, glad I gave you the orc back, buddy. Because <laughs> that could have gone very, very differently and probably not as well for, uh, for NIP. They have stayed in this game and still looking to take it away with a heavy banana setup. Lots of grenades going down, tagging Rez once more. The receiver of the grenades in this game, it feels him and Sergey. 
Ooh. Ryan with fire and concrete. Ali's shooting through the wall. He's going to show this orb, be and rotate. I like that call. NIP aren't deterred, though. They aren't scared. They're going to commit. They've seen Yampi on the corner. Popsky hits a scroll wheel, but he also gets the kill. So it's not a worry here as NIP look to commit. Alu has come right back, though. He hasn't rotated off of this site. And now NIP with a man up. They don't feel the need to rush. They can wait and see if Ents make a mistake. Notice Nork is holding alt middle. If we see his perspective, Nor can hold everything down. He can he can deny any aggressive mid play from Ents across apartments and middle. And the longer he waits here, the more info Nip have that you know Ents are still stacked inside of their sights. Ali gets back into a four on four and almost getting caught crossing back into CT. NIP stacked up outside of the B site, but they still have Nork over in the T apartments, just keeping this A site under wraps and leaving the option open to NIP to rotate back. But with 30 seconds left on this clock, there's not enough time for that anymore. So Nork is going to come and join up with the rest of the gang. There's still a smoke down at short side, and Sergei's aggressed there to try and get the info if it's clear. He's not going to get that information. And now the B play comes in. Alu, one HP as he's tagged and forced back into the ruins. Hampus is going to lock him out of the round, and Plopsky will deal with Sunny. NIP, four on two in the post plant, and Hampus holding this angle into CT. All right. All right, Ariel. Needed a couple more like that, though, for this round Ooh. to be found. And Hampus, he's had enough. He wants this game to be over and done with. It's Matt and series point for NIP. Both these teams trying to dodge elimination, and NIP putting up a convincing case right now. One away from getting it done. Ents, they're hoping to lock in a second overtime here with a victory in this round. Double AWP between Yampi and Alu. AKs across the board for NIP, not an AWP in sight. I want to do something fast here. Popsky has been a tank in this game and just in this team, 30 kills right now. Nork, of course, has had his fair share of impact at 28, but Plopsky, the, the entries into B are sublime in that round, taking down Sonny from the back of the box, getting dinked as well, but it doesn't stop him. NIP, they might go an apps drop here, right? We we said this is how Ents got to OT in the first place, and so NIP, they're going to use that against them, a strat that they haven't even shown in this game yet since round two in the first half. Sergey flashed out. It's going to be a fast play out boiler. They're just going to burst short side and Sergey not spotted. His shots go nowhere. Popsky trades and Nork jumps out of the apartments to save the day. It's only Ariel in the pit and that's a great round for NIP. They speed it up. They don't stop and they commit off the back of the kills. That was the problem with the A site for Nip earlier but it's not a problem today. Instead it ends maybe falling short of this series in a two on four. Yampi doing damage through the smoke, but not enough to find a kill. Him and Sunny, they've got to come together now to keep this one rolling. Oh, and Sunny dear. does get that kill. Two on three. And these three players for NIP are all tagged up. They're all a little low. Sunny caught crossing. And Yampi 